Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the visual binning feature in SPSS. So I have here a data set that has four variables, an ID, a group, a pretest, and a post-test. Let's say I want to divide the pretest into bins based on parameters that I set. So we would use transform and then visual binning. And you can see it has variables and variables to bin. So I'm going to move pretest over to variables to bin and click continue. And you can see the distribution here. You can see there's a minimum score of 28 for the pretest and a maximum score of 50. So it's going to ask us the name of the bin variable. So let's just call this pre and allow us to make cut points. And we do that by clicking the make cut points button. And you can see it offers three different ways here, equal width intervals, equal percentiles, and cut points at mean and standard deviations. So I'll first show you the equal width intervals. So the first cut point location in this case, uh, it's logical to make it 28 because that's the minimum score. Let's say we want 10 cut points. So once you enter that, it's going to calculate the width as 2.2. And click apply and you can see it puts the lines in dividing up the bins so if you click ok here it'll tell you it's going to create one variable and then after the code executes you can see the new variables created and it has the bins that we specified in the dialog so if we go to transform visual binning that's again with the pretest, we'll move it over here. And we'll name this next variable pre1. And let's make the cut points based on equal percentiles. So it asks here for the number of cut points. Let's just make it five. It's going to calculate that percentage width automatically. Again, click apply and then OK. Let us know it's creating the one variable. And you can see here behind that, how it's divided up based on percentiles. You can see it created a new variable with those bins that we asked for. So now to create one based on standard deviations, we'll go back to visual binning. Again, we'll use pretest, move it over. We'll call this pre2. And I'll make the cut points based on the standard deviation, so go plus or minus one. I'll click OK, and you can see it places the cut points on the distribution. I'll click OK. And now it's created bins based on plus or minus one standard deviation. So as we look to interpret what this means, if you look at the value one, for this one, this is based on standard deviations. So this would be a score that's below one standard deviation. The two would be a score that's between negative one standard deviation and the mean. And the three would be a score that's less than positive one standard deviation, but greater than the mean. And four would be greater than positive one standard deviation. So that's how it divides up with the one, two, three, and four for that. So I want to show you another important feature uh, available in the visual binning selection. So we'll go here and again we'll move pretest over. I'll click continue. I'm going to name this variable pre3. And I'm going to make the cut points Again, plus or minus one standard deviation. But this time I'm going to make labels. And you can see it's made four labels less than or equal to 33, 34 to 38, 39 to 42, and 43 plus. So I'm going to click OK here. 
and as you can see it populated those ranges in this variable pre3 based on the same parameters of plus or minus one standard deviation. So this is a convenient way to display data based on range. And we could also do the same thing with the ranges. So I'll call this, this variable PRE4. We'll just use plus or minus one and plus or minus two standard deviations. And you can see it makes the labels appropriate for those parameters and creates a variable that matches those parameters. So the visual binning feature allows you to divide a variable up into these bins based on parameters you specify. And in this case, in these last two cases, show you the range that the score falls in. I hope you found this video on using the visual binning feature in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.